So it's an interesting film, and it's I'm, my reaction to it is a bit of a mixed bag. The film is based on a documentary by Fenton Bailey and Randy Barbato, which I think we may have reviewed here on the show. I can't remember, a, couple, a few years ago. Anyway, the story of... Um, Jim and Tammy Faye, obviously in America, is very well known. I presume that there are people here who wouldn't know about them. But as you quite rightly said, here in the UK, our attitude to televangelists who raise staggering amounts of money and live in opulent wealth that is raised from their congregation ringing in, we, we sit, hucksters is the word you use, and yes. I think that's the kind word. Um, because it's... I'd also just watched... Um, uh, Nightmare Alley. So I, I had the word huckster very much in my head. Yeah, and of course that is a that is a very very good connection because in Nightmare Alley, the Bradley Cooper character basically says this: what you're doing is you know in the, when he's talking to the psychiatrist, the psychoanalyst, um, played by Kate Blanchett, he says, "You're selling a lie, the same as I am. You're a huckster. You've got an act. You've got an act." And televangelism used to be the kind of thing that we would see on Clive James programs. Remember Clive James yes. did those programs which he'd go to America and he'd basically point a camera at all the madness going on and go, can you believe this stuff is happening? And that was the kind of environment in which televangelism lived. Of course, as Jessica Chastain said in that interview, it became very, very tied up with politics, with the rise of the evangelical right. And certainly where we are politically at the moment, those two movements are still, you know, still intertwined. And it's very probable that if people here knew about televangelism, this is going to go across the, 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 brink, the, the, the gap into the news. I'm just warning you ahead. Uh -huh. That's probably where they'd know about it from. The other point that you raise, which is very germane to this, is that if what you do is take the, as you said, take the entirety of televangelism and just say, OK, Huxter's... Carnival Sherman, con men, and certainly when you look at the history of that kind of televangelism, there's an awful lot of people being found guilty of crimes and serving hard time mm -hmm. of fraud and all manner of stuff. And nobody is surprised when people who are televangelists and telling everybody how to behave then suddenly turn out to have been behaving appallingly in their private life, whether it's you know sexually or morally or financially, whatever it is. What makes the Tammy Faye story interesting is that what she does goes against the grain in two ways. Firstly, again, you covered this in the interview, that she demands a seat at the table. And as you quite rightly say, she literally demands a seat at the table. She actually brings the seat to the table and is then sat down with, you know, a bunch of big beast bears who are very, very sniffy about her presence. And then the other thing that she does is that when... HIV AIDS begins, she is the person who reaches out and she is the person who says, all God's children, which at the time was an incredibly radical thing to do, particularly within the context that she was doing it, which was that the evangelical right was going around, breathing, you know, preaching fire, hellfire and brimstone. So those two things mark her out as a very, very interesting subject for a documentary, certainly. And in this case, for a dramatisation, which I'm going to have to talk about after the news because I can hear the news music approaching. So I think it's fair to say, I mean, I have a very, very low opinion of TV evangelism, and I'm sure that that's something which a lot of people in the UK feel similarly about because it's very much, it was an American phenomenon. And it was Vincent D'Onofrio as uh, Jerry Falwell in, in that, that scene with the table. So then you have this this interesting character who goes, you know, who's is part of all of that. And certainly the whole kind of um, the prosperity uh, doctrine of uh, Jim and Tammy Faye, which was that, you know, God wants you to be successful and God wants you to be rich. And the, you know, the, 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 the mad nails and the, the makeup and the, the, the permanently applied uh, lipstick liner that will not, that cannot come off and all that stuff, you know, the enjoying the fruits of all of this stuff and then finding herself at odds with the, with the, the you know the conservative uh, right wing uh, evangelical movement, which is very very anti LGBTQ, and becoming an LGBTQ um, icon. Now I think that her performance is great. I think the story is really fascinating because it is you know it's kind of strange and counterintuitive, and it does that thing about okay, well you think that you understand all of it. Well here is a, here is a, a character who's harder to understand. If I have a reservation about the film, it's that the film. Is the film is very well behaved. Um, in the character of Tammy Faye, particularly as you know, as portrayed by Jessica Chastain, I loved it when she talked about you know her singing register. It, it's not nuanced. Her singing register is as if she is singing directly to her. Everything is like you know, it's completely like that. 
And that performance, that kind of, you know, larger than life, the, the, the hair, the nails, the, if you look at the poster for, um, for the, the original documentary about Tammy Faye Baker, in which there is that picture of her looking, I mean, it's an extraordinary image. And of course, the title kind of almost implies something like the eyes of Laura Mars in that sort of weird, slightly exploitative way. My reservation about the film, therefore, is that the film feels a lot more ordinary than its subject. It is a fascinating story. It is a fascinating character study, because not least because it does that thing about how do you feel about these characters? How do you feel about anybody involved in this process? How do you feel about somebody who is involved in this process and is part of it, but is also going off in their own direction? So I my response to the movie is I wish the movie had been more adventurous. I wish the movie had been, you know, sort of embraced its camper side. It embraced its more. I kept thinking when I was watching it, I wonder what Todd Haynes would have made of this. I wonder what somebody, you know, who'd made Superstar, the Karen Carpenter story, for example, would have made of it. But I think at the centre of it, you have, a ve you know, a very, very good, and it was interesting hearing Jessica Chastain talking about her own, reaction to the role the thing about that lovely phrase she used about because of the makeup because there's so much makeup involved in it that she had the phrase she used was she had a very long runway every day before having to take off and completely immersing herself in in that role so i think there is a disparity between her performance and the rest of the film the story is fascinating the film is okay her performance is great the rest of the performances are i mean i think vincent nofrio's jerry Falwell is is a is a very good performance i don't think anything else is at that register and personally i would have liked the film's register to be to be less televisual i mean i suppose there is an argument which is if you're making a film about televangelists being televisual may be a stylistic decision it's part of the thing it may be part of the thing what, what was your feeling um, I, it's a terrific. St I think it's a terrific story in finding uh, because I had just put them all in the same bag of people. Uh, you know, they they were the indescribables, the unmentionables. We just didn't <laughs> want to spend any time with any of them. And then the film says, <clears throat> "Hang on a second, there's something interesting going on." Yeah. And the only re and and also, and I did mention the podcast in the in the conversation is that if you've listened to the John Ronson podcast, which, which you should do because it's great, it is fantastic. He they talk about the and they play clips from the original Tammy mm -hmm. Faye interview with Steve Peters, the um, the gay priest who who has AIDS and has come out. And this is the mid '80s, yeah. as she says, so very different time. Very different times, and so you, so we knew all about it. Plus, as revealed in that in that podcast, we know that the reason that Steve Peters is not in the studio, he's sort of down the line, is because apparently the crew who were in charge of the studio said they didn't want to be in the same room as someone with AIDS. So uh, it's it's when you know the truth of the story, it's even more extraordinary. Yeah. But I thought, and and interesting that she would point out and underline the fact that that whole thing, which is part of the prosperity gospel, you can be anyone you want to be, is being a particularly American thing. It is a particular. It, it is a particularly American thing. It is the American dream here, and I always think, no, you can't. Yeah, I know. I agree. Yes, no, you can't. It's 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 just not true. No, you can't. Uh, you're you're ending up sounding like a curmudgeon, but actually, no, no. But it's like it's just manifestly true. true. The whole you might want to play and be captain for Wales in the Six Nations, but if you're not good enough, you won't be able to. And also, if for a million other reasons, even if you are good enough, there may be very good reasons why it doesn't happen. You know, for reasons of uh, prejudice and opportunity, and you know, the whole idea that anyone can be anything isn't true. Yes. Anyway, if you're, if you're sorry, like to, sorry um, to let you down like that, but sorry, no. hey, it'll be all right in the end.